Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, presented by the Demani Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm a senior industrial designer. I've been using SolidWorks for almost 15 years now. Do rough surfaces have you on edge? Got a kink in your spline? Zen out and come to really understand how SolidWorks surfacing works. Using advanced techniques, I'll demonstrate surface modeling workflows that allow you to quickly and easily create the most challenging of shapes. Located just outside Chicago, Illinois, the Demonic Group is a full-service product development consultancy offering industrial design, design engineering, electrical engineering, and software development services. Welcome to another installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing, where we'll be taking our final look at the solid sculpting technique, where we're using surfaces to cut away and shape material on solid bodies. So we're, in this installment, we will be creating the final sculpting in this portion of this shape here. So let's jump into SOLIDWORKS. So we'll pick up where we left off in the last video where we've completed this corner of the shape with the boundary surface. And we'll be looking at integrating this area here with this area. And so actually what I need to do in this portion is to add a little bit additional material such that I have some room to have a nice kind of sculpted shape that uh, transitions from this kind of kicked up surface. You can see this arced edge here down into this bottom edge. So the way I'm going to do that is just add a little bit of material uh, with the uh, standard extrude and then I need to shape the material. So what this is going to do is actually allow me to not use a bunch of split lines or anything to define the portion that we will be creating with boundary surfaces and instead do it with an extrude feature. So I do need to shape this so I've actually created a extruded body. We can kind of start seeing here that I'm laying out the edges that our new surfaces will live within and we'll be using these edges as our profiles for boundary surfaces. So I'm cutting away this body here with our cutting tool. Uh, I could have ended up using a cut. I had the surface for another purpose and instead of just deleting the surface, I just use it as the cut. Uh, it could also be done with a normal cut extrude feature and I'm combining our additional material into the part. Now, ultimately we don't need any of these faces, uh, but what's beneficial is that it's giving me these edges here as well as this outside edge. So I'm basically using the extrude feature to generate new edges for our surfaces to live with. So now I'm going to be using the delete face tool to remove these faces from the model. They're no longer required. The next thing we need to worry or start looking at is how are we going to address this filleted corner? Now, I don't actually have a profile that joins this edge and this edge. I might be able to say trim the back and generate a, a 3D sketch with a spline between them. Maybe I use some project curves to get there. But what I find is really easy and really powerful is using the asymmetric tool uh, on a surface body. And what this is going to do is actually, you know, kind of get rid of this portion here that doesn't look nice that we don't actually want these straight kind of overlapped edges and we get a new shape. So I can actually dial in exactly what this shape looks like by using the asymmetric option and changing its size accordingly. So I'm really happy with the, the size that I dialed in here. It turned out it needed to be about 20 millimeters in one direction, 16 in the other. I have that curvature continuous option on such that we have a G2 connection between this planar face and this planar face. I'll Ultimately, there will be some more surface detailing in here, but this is going to give us a really nice transition from this top planar face here. So let's add this into the model. And now we have that really nice smooth edge that was way easier to do instead of relying on 3D spline or something like that by just using that fillet tool and using the asymmetric option to dial in exactly what this edge looks like. So this technique does give up a little bit of control. You know, I might have a little bit more overall control of what this spline looked like if I had done it manually with a sketch or with a projected curve. However, for what I, my purpose is here, it looked good, you know, and if it looks good, then let's take it. So now it's just a matter of going in and generating new boundary surfaces. So this bottom boundary surface is pretty straightforward. We're going from this edge here to between this edge and this edge. And note that I'm just letting it uh, be free here. I don't actually have a second profile in direction two. I'm just letting SOLIDWORKS fill in that information and that'll be good enough for now. Ultimately, we will do a little bit of cleanup work on this edge, but we're gonna do that once we have the second boundary surface in. Now this boundary surface is a little bit interesting because if we were to go from here to here with a boundary surface, it, the actual surface might not be exactly what we want, and that's due to what's referred to as the UV curves of the surface. So if we were to start creating this surface and we can kind of see our curvature combs in direction one and direction two, if 
but uh, we ultimately get the mesh preview of what our surface looks like. And it starts to change a little bit as we add the curvature to face option here and the curvature to face option here. And we're starting to get these kind of weird zigzaggy lines and that's what the surface actually kind of looks like. There's a bunch of map that goes through here that plots the kind of X and Y coordinates of the surface. And I don't like the way that the adding the curvature to face option is actually looking here. So I'm gonna overbuild the surface. I'm gonna build it longer and then trim it back such that our UV curve form more of a, a square grid like layout instead of the kind of scrunch shape that we saw there. And so one really powerful and easy way of doing that, just hide this boundary surface, is by using the 3D sketch. And one thing that uh, a lot of people don't know you can do in a 3D sketch is actually use the 3D sketch as a profile in a boundary surface and allow you to make curvature continuous connections to underlying uh, faces. So when I convert this edge, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag it along here and we'll merge these two points. And then this uh, construction line, I just have parallel to the right plane that allows me to lock down this endpoint of our uh, converted edge in the 3D sketch. So now I can use this new 3D sketch profile here as a profile in my boundary surface. And I'm actually able to use curvature to face. So even though it's overbuilt, even though that this edge doesn't entirely touch here, I'm still able to add that curvature to face relation. And if we look at our UV curves, they are much nicer looking. We don't have that uh, that wobble in the, the UV curve that we had before. So whenever we're, we're modeling, we wanna try and keep the UV curves looking as nice as possible. And if the preview doesn't kind of match what we're looking for, if we do have some scrunching or some wobbling, then consider this approach where we're using the 3D sketch to make our profile longer, such that our profiles in direction one are similar in length and not truncated like we had before. So I'm really happy with this, but ultimately I can't use this surface. Uh, it does need to get trimmed back. Same with this one. And what I like to do here is extend them, but the uh, using the surface extend feature, but the order of operation gets important. So before actually extending, I need to create my trim sketches, which are simply straight lines between the end vertices between this line and, and or this edge and this edge. And this edge, and this edge, same thing over here. We can see that there might be a little less material over here and a little bit more material. I'm just in the habit of cleaning up my surface edges such that they're nice and straight before creating new geometry between them. So I need to actually create the sketch first such that my vertices are still in the model before extending. So the order of operations is important. So now that we've created our sketch, we can actually extend. We'll extend the other face here, and then we'll use our surface trim command to trim back. And now we have the profile that our new surface can live in. Just rotate the view so we can take a slightly better look at our final boundary surface. And this one's pretty straightforward. So we're going to create our boundary between two profiles in direction one and our two profiles in direction two. We do need to set up curvature to face and curvature to face. Sometimes you can get away with not using it and you have better results, but in this case, I had actually started with uh, without curvature to face on these two end faces. And I was once knit into the model, I found that uh, the result wasn't actually quite there. The way I was able to quickly tell by setting those to none, and then when we actually knit into the model, is the fact that I use tangent edges as uh, Phantom. So what that does is set all of my tangent edges to dotted here. You can change that under uh, view, display, tangent edges as phantom. And then edges that aren't actually tangent are uh, solid here. So I know that I do need to go back in and edit this boundary surface. And I'm going to select curvature to face. I'm going to ignore that little message here. Curvature to face, once again, ignoring the message. And now I will rebuild the boundary surface and can immediately determine that uh, we do have a nice tangent connection between those faces. So to recap, I used an extrude feature to create an additional shape that would be used to add new model edges to the model such that we could create boundary surfaces between them. Instead of using a 3D sketch with a spline or perhaps a projected curve between 2D sketches, I use the asymmetric fillet tool on my surface body to generate this new profile here, which would be using for the boundary surfaces.
We used a 3D sketch converted from a model edge and then dragged that uh, longer. We're still able to use curvature to face or tangency to face in our boundary surface, but what this allows us to do is better shape the UV curves, which are the underlying math of the surface. By extending our 3D sketch longer, we have a UV curve layout that is far more grid-like with lines roughly perpendicular to each other. If we hadn't done this, then the UV curves take on the shape of the underlying surfaces. And here we can see that they're starting to add a little bit of uh, irregularity to the layout of the surface. And I found that this ultimately, with a squarer layout, provided a better quality surface than when we did not extend that 3D sketch out. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this installment of Zen and the Art of SolidWorks Surfacing. Be sure to check out the example SOLIDWORKS files on the Demani Group website linked in the description below. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Happy SOLIDWORKS surfacing!